What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna to start to look at web development with Python and Flask. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna to start to learn how to build websites with Python and Flask. But before we get started, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, up until now, we've been doing a lot of Django stuff. I thought we'd kind of pivot and start to look at the Flask framework, web framework, I guess you would call it, building websites with Flask. And in this video, we're gonna build a very, very basic, basic website. And we're gonna do it very fast. That's one of the nice things about Flask. And we're gonna be able to do a lot more complicated stuff with Flask going forward. And we'll get into that in future videos. But this video, I just wanna throw up a very basic website just to give you a, a taste of what you can do with Flask and just to you know, sort of show you how easy it is to get started. So let's head over to the Flask website real quick. And it's just flask.palettesprojects.com. Uh, you can Google it. And this is the Flask website. There's not much to it, you know, very basic website. But if you come down to the quick start guide, uh, you can see basically this is all you really need to get started with Flask. So we're gonna kind of walk through a basic application. We're gonna build a website with, you know, three or four pages just to show you how to get a very basic static website running quickly. So I'm gonna use a few tools in this video, Sublime Text for my coding. Uh, we're gonna use the Git Bash terminal. I like to use that. And I think that's pretty much it. So if you're not familiar with the Git Bash terminal, check out some of my other videos. Uh, just Google Git Bash. And it is, let's see, git-scm.com forward slash downloads. Download the latest version, install it. Uh, there is a bunch of installation screens. You're just gonna have to click next for each one and that should be fine. You also need Python, so go to python.org. If you haven't installed this already, click the download link and download the latest version. Very important, the very first screen that pops up when you install Python, there's a little uh, box at the bottom that says add Python to path. It's unchecked by default. You have to check that box, make sure it's checked, and then just walk through the rest of the installation and you should be fine. So uh, let's see, one last thing, Sublime Text. It's at sublimetext.com. Download the latest version for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Now I'm on Windows, hopefully you are too. If you're on Mac, you should be able to follow along, no big deal, and you should be good to go. So let's just dive right in here and get started. Open your Git Bash terminal, and let's make a directory to hold our our Flask file, so mkdir, and I wanna put this in the C drive, and let's just call this my Flask. Doesn't really matter. Then we need to change into that directory with the cd command, so cd forward slash my underscore Flask. All right, so we can see there's nothing in here. So now I want to create a virtual environment. I just always do this whenever I create almost anything. So I'm gonna go python dash m, V-E-N-V, -E and then I'm just gonna call this virtual, virtual, there we go. And this usually takes a few seconds to do its thing while it's spinning it up. Okay, so that's done. Now if we list the stuff here, we see there's this virtual directory. So I can turn on my virtual environment now by typing source, uh, then virtual scripts activate. And we see now we've got this little virtual thing above our command prompt. That tells us that our virtual environment has been turned on. If you're on a Mac or a Linux, I think the command is source uh, bin activate, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it is. If, if, if that doesn't work, just Google it and you should be able to figure it out. All right, to turn this guy off, we can deactivate. And when we do that, the thing disappears and I'll go ahead and turn it back on. Okay, so now we should open up our sublime text and let's create a new file. So a new file, and let's go file, save as, and then navigate to your C drive, and then find that my underscore flask directory, and let's just call this app.py, okay? So we've got this, now let's head back over to a virtual environment. We actually need to uh, pip install fat flask. So it's just pip install flask. And when we do that, it's downloading and installing flask. Flask. Now, if we go pip freeze, we can see a whole bunch of stuff has been installed. Click Flask, it's dangerous, Jinja 2, markup safe, and Ver, Verkzug. 
So we got a whole bunch of cool stuff installed and now we're ready to go. So let's head back over to our app and we just want to from uh, Flask import Flask, capital Flask. And let's also import render underscore template. And we'll see what this is in just a second. So first things first, we have to create an app and we call this capital Flask. And it's just underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore, right? So that creates a, an app, in, a, in, an instance of Flask running, creates an app for us. Now we want to set a route, and we'll just create one right now. So app.route, and then we want this to be the forward slash. So we want this to be our index page, our home page, our root route. So we just use a slash for that. Now let's, let's create um, some logic for this. Let's go def index so we want to create this index Oops. and inside of here we can just return uh, pretty much anything we want so let's go hello world so if we save this that's basically all we need to get started we can head back over to our terminal and just type in flask run which is kind of silly but it works now if you have problems, if you get an error doing that, you might have to type in, let's control C to break out of this. Uh, you can type in, it is Python dash M flask run, uh, but you don't have to. If flask run should work just fine for you. Uh, so control C to break out of this again. Now the flask documentation says first you have to punch in this command, export flask underscore app equals app dot pi, whatever your, your file is named. Um, that's setting an environmental variable that tells Flask where your app is, but uh, we only have one file, and so we can just go Flask run, and it seems to work. So when then when we do that, we get this URL, and this is just our local host, and it's port five thousand. So the uh, Flask server web server is running on port five thousand. It's listening, and uh, we can head over to our web browser and just paste that in. And boom, we get hello world. So just that simple, it took like two minutes to create an, an app. So this is a very silly app, right? It just says hello world. We're not really creating any websites this way. We're just making something work, right? To actually create a website, we can come back here and we can get rid of all of this. And instead, let's point this app to an actual HTML file that has our actual website. So we could go uh, render underscore template and then point this to index.html. Now this render template, of course, is this guy up here that we imported at the beginning of the video. So go ahead and save this. Now I'm gonna head over here to the project file or the project uh, menu here and let's add a new project or let's add a folder to the project right here and then navigate to my flask and then so you were in C and go down to your my flask and select the folder and then it'll pop up all of our things here. So we see this virtual, um, this is our virtual environment. We can just sort of ignore that PyCache. There's nothing in here. Here's our app.py file. Come up to the top level, right click and let's create a new folder. And down here at the bottom, you can see we can type in the name for it. So let's call it templates. And when we do that pops up. So now we can create a new file inside of templates and let's file save as, and let's call this index.html. And inside of here, we can create actual, uh, you know, HTML. So hello world with an H1 tag. So if we save this and remember, we're now calling this file and Flask knows to look in the templates directory for it. So we can head back over here and if we hit reload, likely nothing is going to happen. And it didn't. That's because Flask doesn't realize at this point that anything's changed. So we need to do the control C on our keyboard, con the control button and the C button at the same time to break out of here. And we need to run this guy again. Now we'll, we'll fix this later on. So it's always listening for updates, but that's a topic for another time. We're just throwing up some quick stuff right now. So here, if we hit reload, boom, we get hello world. And it's, you know, actually big and cool. And it's an actual HTML file. So, all right, we're starting to get somewhere. Let's head over to getbootstrap.com. And this is just the Bootstrap CSS framework. I use this for all kinds of stuff. Click on getting started, and then just scroll down here to the starter template. I'm just gonna copy this whole thing, and then head back over to Sublime and click the index page. And let's just paste in all that starter code. 
And if you know HTML, you can. This is just very basic stuff. Um, let's make a couple of little quick changes. So we hit Control S to save this file, and then come back here and Control C to break out of here and run our server again. And then come back to our website and hit reload. Boom! This has now changed to Bootstrap. And if we view the page source, we can see all this other Bootstrap stuff is in there, and that's cool. So now we can head back over to Bootstrap. And uh, let's play around with this a little bit. Let's head over to the documentation and I think components. And then we let's grab a quick nav bar. So I'm just going to scroll down and I like this one. It looks fine. So let's copy it. And let's just head back over here. And right below our body, we just paste in all that that code. And then this H1, let's wrap this in a div. So this is go, let's go div. Uh, class equals container. This is just a bootstrap class that um, well, I'll show you what it does in just a second. All right, so go ahead and save this. It just moves everything over and down a little bit off the side of the screen because right now we have everything crammed right up into the corner and we just want to kind of move it a little bit. So now we can come back over to our terminal and break out of here again and run the terminal again. <laughs> I know it's kind of silly. And when we do, boom, we have this drop down. It has some things. It's very cool. Awesome. All right. So now let's get rid of this search thing. So I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to look for the search thing. Uh, where is it? Right here, form. So we can get rid of that. Save this. What else do we want to get rid of really quickly? Uh, this disabled and this drop down link. We don't really need that. So here's the disabled thing. We can just get rid of that. Let's see, here's the drop down thing. So I'm just clicking the, the opening LI and the closing LI highlights. So I know I can get rid of all of that. All right, so let's save this and reload our server again. See how that looks. Okay, so that's looking better. Let's change this nav bar to something else. Uh, instead of it saying nav bar, let's say uh, John Elder. We're making a, a basic personal website. Change this to forward slash. Save this. One more time. Come back here and break out of here. Run it again. And all right, we've got this John Elder. We click on it. It goes there. It says hello world. Okay, so we've got something here. We've got the beginnings of a website. And uh, that's cool. But what else can we do with this? Well, let's head back over to our app.py and let's create some more pages. So we can go app.route and let's call this about. And this needs to be wrapped in quotation marks. And then we can go define about and we can return render template and let's call, oops, about.html. All right, so if we save this, now let's head over to our templates and right click and create a new file and go file save as. And let's call this about.html. And let's just copy everything from our index page and just paste it in here. But at the top, instead of hello world, let's go about John Elder. And then here it says John Elder. And then down here, instead of hello world, let's say about me, dot, 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 I don't know. Okay. And let's change this from link to about. And let's change this href to slash about. And let's save this. And let's do the same thing for our index page. Let's come over here. Let's change this home to that. And let's change this link to slash about. And let's change this to about save this. And we also need to change this home guy right here. Okay, so all right, that's looking good. Let's break out of our server again, run it again. And you can see as we're going, things are appearing in the server as we load pages and stuff. That's because this terminal has now become our web server. So it's logging everything that we're doing and outputting things onto the screen as we're doing them. That's kind of cool. All right, so let's hit reload here. Now we have home and about and if we click here, boom, it goes to about notice it's forward slash about because that's the route we created. It's showing our about.html page. 
We can toggle back and forth to our home page and our about page. And okay, very, very cool. Now, this is a ridiculously simple website, obviously, but this is everything you need, right, to build a website. We've got templates, we've got a nav bar, we've got some actual code and stuff and navigation and and it was all done basically with 11 lines of code, right? How simple is that? And this is the beauty of Flask. You can just do stuff very quickly and it just works. Now I understand, I get it. This is not a complicated website. There's no database, there's no forms, there's no, you know, dynamic stuff going on. We'll get to all that in future videos. In this video, I just wanted to show you that it's ridiculously easy to get started with Flask and it's a lot of fun to do. I mean, you know, Django is great. I love Django. I use Django for everything, but Django's got a lot of stuff going on, right? And you got to learn a lot of stuff to start using it. It's been 15 minutes we've been working on this and we've got a completely functioning, working, real website. Very, very easy. And there's nothing to it. There's literally one file and then a couple of HTML files. And you'll notice we've already broken apart our website, the logic in one file, the visual views in another file. So if you think of a model view controller um, framework where the model is the database, the, the views are the HTML and the controller is the brains behind the scenes, we've basically got that. We don't have the M yet, we don't have the models, we'll do that later, but we've got the views and the controllers just this easily and that's very, very cool. So I'm gonna call this one done. I just wanted to really just kind of whet your appetite and show you the most basic stuff with Flask, the most basic static website you can build and just how quick and easy you can do it. Now think about templates. In my last series, we did a, a dental website with Django and we used a template file, a dental website template file. You can do that same exact thing with that same exact template using Flask in moments to just import those files and uh, you don't have to render up the static stuff. You just put them in a templates file and you're good to go. Very, very cool and very powerful and, and a lot of fun. So uh, in the next few videos, we'll get into this in more detail. We'll start learning how to do cooler things and we'll look at databases and show you how to make stuff dynamic and all that good stuff. Like I said, in this video, I just wanted to whet your appetite and uh, hopefully get you excited for Flask. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really, really helps the channel and I really appreciate. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access over 40 of my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 80,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.